Bularoo Centre grew to service the needs of farming families and it is this agricultural history that has shaped the township. It earned its name as the centre of the Survey 100 of Bularoo, derived from an Aboriginal word roughly translated to place of mud. Today, Bularoo Centre is still a service centre for the grain and livestock producers of the surrounding areas. In the early days, all goods from the farm went by bullock teams to Port Germain. The railways opened on the 27th of April 1910, so all products from the farm could be moved faster and easier. Nowadays the rumble of trains has gone, but once a year Bularoo Centre comes alive to the smell of smoke, steam, and sounds of tractors and stationary engines. In 1968, Bularoo Centre first comes alive to the sound of old tractors and traction engines on Brian Norther Hayes' property. How did it all begin? Brian would attend clearing sales, where he saw a lot of old tractors being sold for scrap. The thought was, if this continues there wouldn't be any of the old machines left for future generations to appreciate. It all comes about by one man's dream. Then joined by other like-minded people the Bularoo Steam and Traction Society was formed. Since that first rally in 1968, the collection has grown. The society moved to the Bularoo Oval, where they set up the museum they have today. With a lot of hard work in restoring those tractors, old farm machinery and steam-powered engines to have this great collection they have now. It gives the younger generation a chance to see how farming machines and practices have changed. The Bularoo Steam and Traction Preservation Society Museum is a world-class display that attracts visitors from all over the world. The museum features South Australia's largest collection of steam and traction engines, with more than 150 machines on permanent display. Lined up along the fence you will find, Fowler Ploughing Engine, Fowler Single Cylinder Ploughing Engine, Yorkshire Steam Wagon, Aveling and Porter Standard Steam Roller and Aveling and Porter P-Type Tandem Roller. All were being fired up ready for the demonstration of those engines. Before the gates are open to the public, work has already started on the steam-powered machines. Light up and preparation work involves the inspection of the machine, checking water level before a fire is lit. While warming the engine, it is time to oil and resaw the moving part. Fill a bunker with wood ready for the day's activities. Yorkshire Steam Wagon, number 34, of 1903, by the Yorkshire Patents Steam Wagon Company of Leeds, England. It is the oldest known surviving Yorkshire in the world. Imported by T. Russell of Geelong, Victoria and used by Smith and Timms in Adelaide, South Australia before going to Wyala, South Australia for use in the construction of the town's first dam. It finished its working life in 1918, while one person goes about filling the bunker with wood, while another person does the oiling and check of the moving parts. On the Fowler ploughing engine, the operator has to climb up onto the top to oil all moving part and check everything good to go. No, it is not sauce, but oil he is putting in the oil pots. Number 4390, 16 HP compound. A pair was supplied new to the South Australia Colony Government in 1882. Purchased by J.D. McTaggart in 1908 for work on the Nonning lease. Major overhauls in 1927 included new crankshafts and a half-barrel shell which was drilled and hammer riveted by station staff under supervision from Horwood Bagshaw, used until 1942. Showing the builder's plate, of John Fowler and Company of Leeds. 
unlike your car, you just don't turn a key to start these machines. You are starting off with a cold, lifeless lump of steel. You have to bring it to life by building up steam pressure. Those machines are alive and breathing because they take work to keep them going. You must keep putting wood on the fire and water in the boiler when required. Vertical boiler made by Hawkan Company, Kapunda, South Australia and used by the railways at Farina on the Elgan line. Rider hot air engines safer than steam engines these required less attention and were popular for pumping water from streams or shallow wells. They relied on expansion and contraction of it due to alternately heating the air by fire and cooling by water to move a piston from one end of the cylinder to the other. Blackstone engine number 123,545, type RCG 115 HP at 195 revolutions per minute, bore 18 inches, stroke 24 inches, features include air blast injection and hot bulb ignition. It was tested by the factory on the 4th of January 1917 before being exported to Clutterbuck Brothers of Adelaide, South Australia. It was used to pump water at Mapalonga Pumping Station, South Australia. The last time it was used was during the 1956 floods where it was driving two centrifugal pumps of approximately 18 inches diameter. Take your life 
give me a hand. This is called a back scraper. Now, it doesn't take much imagination to understand why they call it a back scraper. This scraper used, was used for cleaning out spilled out of a dam. And what, what used to go on, that was all right. But if it happened to hit a stone, then it came into your own because it backed around all over the place. There you are. He's got another one. And back you come. Now that's what you call an effort. And if you think you want to do that all day, uh, it's not fun probably. But they did it. If you go into the building, down there, you'll see some photos on the wall of three horse teams cleaning out a dam with three buck scrapers. And there was eight horses at each team. So you can see, it's very simple, very crude. But man, is it hard work. He, he deserves a round of applause for that, because that, I can tell you, that's hard work. Yeah. Now, this, this scope's a lot smarter than, than the buck scraper. You've got the lever on the side holding the cut, so that you can vary the cut. You can drag it to wherever you want to. Then you tip it out, level it, and go again. So, so that's, that's the improvement. So this is getting into the modern age. This is one of Harry Ferguson's many inventions he made up. I'm not sure how many pieces of equipment he made for the Ferguson, but it was quite a few. They had front unloaders and scrapers and blades and all sorts of things. I'm not sure. There you are. One man operation. And you can see that's a lot smarter than having two to operate. Now we're going back to the 1800s and 90s to give you a demonstration of how they made dams in those days. Compared to the bulldozer that is sitting over there and that's 1950. So that's 60 years old. This is 120 years old. So you can see that they made a fairly big improvement in those years. Operators are uh, communicating with one another with hand signals. Now the ploughman is going to do. He's going to do a switch around. Right, drop her in the ground, lad. You pull the lever, and in the ground she goes. earth tanks so they could run sheep so originally the water was the problem they had to have great big dams 800 yards apart the banks were and they used to go out there there was a crew of 23 there was wood carters and wood choppers water carters all sorts of things there was nine times on this piece of equipment but we only used three
this group, 48 year rally, and he would have been going another four or five years prior to that for his first rally, but he would have been collecting way before that again. In honour of him, we will be running Red Tractor, I'll play the Red Tractor so that you all know which one we're talking about, it's the Mogul, and that will be going first, and that will be followed by the Caldwell Vale, which is the big truck with the men sitting up top. The gentleman up the top in the white shirt and the little peak cap, his name is Trevor Caldwell, fourth or fifth generation of the original builder of this unit. Yeah, he's just over the moon to be able to have a ride on this machine made by his relative. This is a 1910 unit. It came to us as a whole mass of bits and pieces and we've spent many hours and quite a few thousand dollars restoring this unit. It's four-wheel drive and has power steering. The driver is Peter Gerblich from Port Piri. This was one of the first tractors that Brian Kinnearhouse collected and restored. It was one of only about 20 that he restored. The orange tractor in front of me is a Chamberlain 40K. This was the first model that Chamberlain's made in Western Australia. Getting back to the Mogul, um, quite an achievement to restore this particular unit. You can see the size of it, and for one man to do that, collect all the bits and pieces, it's quite an achievement. A Lance Bulldog Model S, 1953. This is still a bit difficult to the other Bulldogs in it. It has a two-cylinder engine. This is a lovely restored Fortson E27N petrol caro. Belonged to the club. And he's towing a hay rake. The hay rake would work with somebody sitting on the seat, working the lever, and they'd rake the hay up into um, rows. Little John Deere Lindemann tractor crawler. He's towing seven thorough marboard plow. And that's driven by the owner, Ken Arms from Uluru. This is a very, very early Alice Chalmers Model U, come out from America. When these were built, they were one of the strongest tractors around. This came originally from Morgan, then it went over to Yongola, and it was compared to a team of 10 to 20 horse. So that just gives you an example of the power. Going past me again is this very early Kelly and Lewis, driven by one of our young ladies who's just so keen to hop on the herd tractor, or one of these tractors. Here we have a WD2 Newman. There's a tiny little motor in that front bonnet area there. One 
cylinder, three wheel, designed for market garden type of work, and that's owned by Jeff here from Bullaroo. Here we have a McDonald Imperial Super Diesel. These were made at Ballarat in Victoria. Good old Australian made, single cylinder, horizontal diesel, running on crude oil. Quite an un interesting and unusual tractor. Coming up now is Phil Jeske driving his grandfather's tractor and it's the oldest bulldog here. You can tell by the shape and size of the engine. You can also tell that Phil loves driving these tractors. The first tractor in the collection that was restored by my father, Lewis Jeske, who was in, a, in the original um, Foundation Club. This tractor has got four forward gears, but it doesn't have a reverse. So to tuck it into the shed, you've got to reverse the engine. This lovely cross-engine case coming past us now is driven by Hedley Cock, who owned it originally. The motor is different to all the others in that it goes across the frame, thus the name cross-engine case. It's called an 1832. 18 means it has 18 brake horsepower at the drawbar and 32 horsepower at the brake pulley, made in 1926. A reliable broad acre paddock in its heyday. Lance Bulldog is a Model N, 1936. We have talked about it before, two cylinder, opposed, top bulb ignition, runs on crude oil. It develops 40 brake horsepower on the belt pulley and 30 on the tow. It's purchased in 36 on steel wheels used for farming in the Wolokara area which is just above Bullaroo Centre and then a corn pulling a 24 ho shearer combine. Later it was recovered from Murray Town and fully restored. Is an international truck driven by Andrew Todd from Port Pirie. It's the 1922 version. And he's accompanied by our new member, David. Notice the tyres, they're solid rubber. No need for windscreen wipers. 1020 McCormick Deering driven by Bryce Pohl from the Brossa Valley Club. Beautifully restored, purring like a kitten. McCormick Deering 1530, 1927, four cylinder. It was originally fitted with a gas producer and worked with that unit that's on the back. This particular unit is a magnificent Holt model M29, made in 1924. It's a four cylinder. Fairly big motor, four and three quarter by six, six inch stroke. Three forward gears, one reverse. We don't know a lot about its previous history, but it came originally from Kalunga, which is just above Clare and Brinkworth. And uh, we're really proud to own this unit because there's not very many of them around. I know of one in an unresort condition in Adelaide itself, but I don't know of any others around this area. And even though it's made in 1924, just have a listen to that motor. It's just purring without any hiccup. You can almost sense the feeling of power. We have the white steamer leading the old cars. We're very, very pleased to see that in the lead. The owner of this has brought this unit all the way over from Ballarat and we're just excited to have this, this, this um, vehicle here to show off to you today. If you get a chance after the parade, talk to the owner. He's got that bowler hat on and uh, he is just a wealth of knowledge. So we picked up a few passengers should be moving off shortly.
particular note, you should hear nothing as it drives past. From the old cars, this is a 1923 Grave. This is a, a very popular vehicle in the NARC Club, Northern Automotive Restoration Club, based at Port Broad and covers all this area. It was bought off of uh, Don Wilson when he folded the Jaroka Rural Museum. Restored within a year and, and it is one of only very few in existence in the world. <laughs> 